YLab is a place where to share, innovate, and shape your projects, exchange experiences, ideas, and professionalism in a young, dynamic, and modern environment. We are the first incubator in Italy for startups developing innovation in sports. We select and support the best Italian and international talents with tutorship and funding. Sharing the work environment means creating new job opportunities, new contacts, and being in the front row of sports tech innovation. We organize courses, workshops, and conferences, providing knowledge, stimulating curiosity, promoting real and specific skills to innovate technology and business. Eccoci, ciao a tutti, um, benvenuti a una nuova puntata dei Lab Innovation Talks, queste conversazioni con imprenditori, manager, esperti sui temi dell'innovazione e della trasformazione digitale, più in generale sulla cultura del fare impresa eh, nello sport. È una puntata particolare perché sarà una puntata in inglese, perché il nostro ospite non è italiano e quindi eh, a breve farò un cambio di lingua dall'italiano all'inglese, ma prima vi presento eh, il nostro ospite di oggi, che è direi un globetrotter innanzitutto perché ha eh, vissuto, in, ha visto, comunque ha sperimentato 50 paesi su tutti i continenti, è un esperto di sport, un esperto che nasce anche come esperienza nella sport industry, ha, ha avuto diciamo una Uh, ha studiato business administration e manager, sport management a Barcellona e in California, ha lavorato alla Nike e Media Pro come, uh, come stagista all'inizio, ha lavorato per SoccerX all'inizio come, come Inter, quindi ha fatto una, una, uno stage alla SoccerX, che è questa grande convention globale uh, sul, sul mondo del calcio, e poi è diventato uh, sales e marketing executive nel 2012. Da lì comincia un suo percorso di eh, conoscenza di, del mondo della, de, de, della industria del calcio, ha espanso eh, in modo in, in grandissimo il suo network e questo è stato poi un ingrediente fondamentale per la creazione di quella che è la sua attività di oggi. Ehm, diventa, eh, fa parte poi di un, entra a far parte di un gruppo di consulenza con altri professionisti in ambito sempre, sempre sportivo. Questo è un progetto imprenditoriale che non va bene, ma come spesso succede per gli imprenditori, quello che va non va bene serve per poi fare bene eh, i progetti successivi. Eh, quindi intraprende una nuova avventura in un'agenzia eh, eh, che si chiama Atevo Sports Group, eh, in cui si organizzano eh, tornei ed eventi per calcio giovanile, calcio, quello che si definisce grassroots football, quindi calcio di base. E poi proprio si stabilisce a Panama per un periodo, e proprio a Panama con alcuni ex colleghi di SoccerX nasce questa idea di creare questa Football Business Academy, che è stata lanciata nel 2017 con l'obiettivo di creare, di formare eh, delle nuove figure che potessero entrare nel mondo del calcio, quindi per la professionalizzazione dell'industria del calcio e per sviluppare i futuri talenti eh, del gioco. Eh, si occupa per Football, The Football Business Academy di creare nuove partnership, quindi è riuscito nel compito di avere come partner di questo progetto il Benfica, Brighton, Hove Albion, Galatasaray, Fnatic e Olympic Lyonnais. Eh, ma ho parlato fin troppo, quindi ho il piacere di introdurre Christian Dover. Hi Christian, how are you? And welcome to the Wild Up Innovation Talks. Ciao Federico, thanks, thanks for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. I think we we met ourselves in um, we met each other in Manchester at the Glo at the Socrates uh, convention. I remember uh, attending um, a conference. I don't know. It was in the middle of maybe it was uh, 2015 around that uh, that time maybe. And then we 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 started chatting and and we we became friends almost so. It, it's a, it's a very nice to have you here uh, in in, uh, in this talk. Um, so welcome welcome to to the Well Up Innovation Talks. So first question for you is um, so 
you are uh, uh, you are leading uh, one of the main uh, football education programs. There are lots of football education programs, master in sports, business management, whatever. But um, so, why did you think of uh, embarking in such a enterprise? I would say, uh, which is difficult. Um, you have like your people coming and and participants from all over the world. And, and it's a football business academy. It's an international kind of enterprise. So why did you think of this? And uh, can you explain how you've been able to achieve success with the football business academy? And explain what, what the football business academy is, first of all. Sure. Um, so, I mean, the, the idea itself actually wasn't, wasn't mine, I have to admit, so it, it was our CEOs. But uh, we were actually, as you said in your introduction previously, um, working together at Socrates. And, um, and as I was living in Panama, he called me up, he called another friend as well. And um, the idea was kind of like taking shape around the time of, of FIFA gate, essentially. And at that time, we were observing what was happening in the industry. And we were saying to ourselves, okay, like, let's try to do something positive that can hopefully accelerate the professionalization of the football industry by using the experience and contacts that we had in the industry. And so... Fast forward to this day, I think um, you know what what made this possible is to have, I guess, the right team members and the right investors. I think you know, in the context of of YLab and and the fact that you know your audience are uh, startup people, I think it's always important to emphasize on you know without a good team and you know if you don't have the money, good investors, you can have the best idea in the world, but it will be difficult to to make something happen, right? So I think that was kind of the, the basis that we were lucky enough to, to have. Um, obviously, throughout the years since, we've uh, we've been lucky enough to, you know, surround ourselves with different uh, other people and who have ex expertise in different areas. I think this is also, you know, one of the key things to have these types of complementary skills and backgrounds that can help build, you know, the, the blocks of, of the business, essentially. And um, and I think you know at the end of the day it's it's that's where it all started and um, and we've been three and a half years now since we officially launched and uh, we're just getting started so I'm definitely you know, proud and humble enough to say that you know we've, we've managed to to get to here because that also from a startup perspective isn't isn't a given you know many startups they, they fail in the first year or two so um, so yeah we're definitely happy to to still be alive and and, and going strongly. Yeah, I think it's it's a great thing to be alive, uh, especially now and uh, with a thriving business as yours. But can you explain to us um, what is the Football Business Academy? What is the program? How does it work? Um, what is What are the difference, the main differences between the other programs that everyone, well, the, the main programs? And what are the main programs, by the way, uh, at uh, the international level that someone that wants to work in the football business might uh, uh, apply to? Sure. Um, I mean, for us, we're all about accelerating the professionalization of the football industry, right? So what that means is essentially we're, we're, a, we're a business school entirely focused on the football industry. And the reason why we wanted to focus on football was not only because, you know, that's where we, we started our career path, but also because we saw that you know football um, was growing so much over these past couple of decades. It's a very complex industry. Um, it's a very big sport, of course, and the one that moves the most people and, and money, etc. And so, based on our previous experiences, both from an edu educational background, uh, having done you know these types of courses ourselves before, plus having had you know many observations in terms of what was happening in the industry, we're like, okay, like. We need to find a way in which we can, on one side, bring in new talent and give them the necessary tools in order for them to transition to the football industry so that the football industry can benefit from those new perspectives in terms of how it can grow and professionalize further, right? So um, I think, you know, what we did re really well was talking to so many of our football industry contacts that we had um been lucky you know to to get to know thanks to our time at soccer x really almost asking them as well like you know what kind of skills do you are you looking for when you recruit what kind of people and, and attitudes and profiles are you looking for and to then almost like reverse engineer the curriculum of our master program 
to make sure that it includes all the elements that you know they kind of like will want to see in a potential new applicant, right? So we, we, we decided to focus on three pillars, which were knowledge, experience, and network. And this essentially meant you know the creation of a one-year program which would focus on these three pillars and every step of the way, you know, would kind of like have those three pillars in, in the back of their mind, right? So the program itself um, has uh, about six months of online classes, um, followed by three months internship. And then the last two months are uh, presential, so on campus, in which they have uh, additional classes, they have field trip, and they work on a student business project. And so all of these, uh, experiences plus the Soccer X week as well, that is part of our curriculum actually. Um, they make sure that our candidates get the exposure that they need, they get the practical knowledge that they need, and they get the practical experience as well that they need initially to make that transition as smooth as possible. Okay, that, that's that's great. Um, uh, what about the the content? Uh, is that is that uh, like do you, do you offer some kind of vertical kind of uh, modules for the students? Uh, everything around uh, from the administration of uh, of the football organization to uh, law uh, to uh, marketing communication. Is that is that something like that? Um, uh, do you have anything around leadership or? Uh, what, what can you can you expand a little bit more on the program if it's possible and um, and explain to us how and where is it based is that is that in a single location or do you have like uh, more um, I would say headquarters or uh, places where you where you offer the services sure um, so yeah the, the the content if you wish of the curriculum is all focused around making sure that our candidates have a um, comprehensive understanding of how the football industry works. And this means that you know we have essentially a professional so industry experts that are the ones teaching all the classes, um, whether that's you know the main professor for each subject or the guest lecturer. And then the idea is really to, to make sure that everyone going through our uh, master has that kind of like 360 degree understanding of how the football industry works. Because the reality is that the majority of our candidates are career switchers, right? So they're like late 20s, early 30s. They'll have, you know, a very solid background, typically in any of the other fields that you can imagine, whether it's legal or communications or marketing or engineering or sales or coaching even sometimes, right? And they have this interest, this desire to make, you know, that transition because that's what they call their passion. And so by giving them this, comprehensive understanding of, of the football industry they can then more easily apply you know whichever thing they're good at in the football industry and so we do have courses you know all the way from football history which we think is important for them as well to understand um, because you know a football fan will know a little bit but um, when you have someone like like David Goldblatt our, our history professor they they uh, they usually are um, amazed at you know how how far and deep it goes then they go, you know, into subjects such, uh, such as football law, um, ethics and professionalism. Then into more concrete topics such as sponsorship, stadium operations, uh, women's football development as well. Something that we've had since the very beginning because you know we felt it was our a responsibility as well to make sure that you know, people understand what football, women's football is, and what it isn't, and how we can grow it. So, um, and then towards the end of the course, we also have, as you said. Um, subjects related to leadership, to entrepreneurship and innovation, uh, fan engagement, and the like. So it's really trying to give them, you know, all the different perspectives possible, which, you know, not, not only in terms of the, the different courses that we offer them, but also the different profiles and backgrounds of our, of our faculty, right? So they're, they're also people which are, they themselves are from all over the world, right? Which I think is also very important and, I guess, differentiates us in, in a certain way compared to, you know, program which might be physical in one specific country where, you know, all of the professors will tend to be from that specific country, right? So we, we feel that it's important to, to see football through through different lenses and um, having, you know, different nationalities across our faculty and across our uh, student body. I think we, we are able to, to reach this type of international, you know, melting pot, which ends up creating a lot of interesting debates, a lot of interesting um, opportunities as well in terms of business projects or uh, or job opportunities or whatever maybe 
And so this is something that I think we, we've been able to do very well as well. And then in terms of the location, as you mentioned, so the first six months are online. So this is a benefit that uh, allows us on the one hand to attract uh, professors, you know, who are from all over the world. Um, and they're obviously, you know, working in industry, so they're busy, so they, they need to have a bit more flexibility. Uh, likewise, this uh, directly, you know, results in a, in a cost saving for the candidates because they can actually continue working during that time, as opposed to, you know, doing a full uh, one year on campus master where they, they wouldn't have an income. Um, then the internship is a very personalized um, element of the curriculum where it can end, actually end, end up being anywhere in the world. Uh, it's actually me and my colleague in the partnership department that really spend a lot of time talking with all of them to understand you know, what are their strengths, but also what are their aspirations, their, their ambitions, and try to guide them in that process. And so we have a, a network of partnerships with which we obviously also try to identify what needs um, and they, they have, you know, what kind of departments they need support them, what kind of projects they're working on. And by identifying those, those different needs on both sides, we can then you know, identify the synergies and create the best possible matches. So that's the three month internship. And then the last model was uh, historically in Geneva, where, where we're based. But uh, just after COVID happened, we actually were on our way to, to signing a partnership with Nova School of Business and Economics, which is Portugal's number one business and economics school. And so um, as, of, as of now, the, the on-campus model is in Portugal, still obviously with field trips to, to Switzerland and other parts of Europe uh, as part of the curriculum. Well, that's interesting. Um, you are a you know, football expert, I would say, football industry expert. You know football inside out. So I want to ask you, I think, do you think we are at a tipping point in football in terms of that with, with happen, what happens with the pandemic and uh, with this, you know, the changing on the football, uh, of the business models in football that are already taking place, have been, you know, taking place for quite some time. But now this pandemic changes uh, the way we do business and there's uh, new challenges in the change management inside football clubs and in the, in the industry at large. What's your take on this? Do you think we are on the verge of a big change or it's going to be business as usual uh, as it's always been? That, that's always, I think, the, the million dollar question with, with football. I, think I definitely hope it's a tipping point. Um, I definitely see some things happening which can make it the tipping point, um, but I think only time will tell. You know, looking backwards a few years from now, whether the industry actually took advantage of this opportunity to make it a tipping point. I think that's also, you know, part of uh, of, of the industry wanting it, you know, to, to happen and to change the status quo, right? So I think what what COVID in a way did to the industry um, was that it exposed that it has a vulnerable model, right? Um, and I think. You know, some institutions, some clubs will have been better prepared for it because they had, let's say, a more intuitive um, reasoning behind, you know, okay, like, where is the world going to, you know, with technology, with data, with, with all of the above, uh, with governance, etc. cetera. Um, and then I think once COVID hit and, and you know, we kind of like started seeing what that meant, you know, so we're not having football for such a long time and they're not having fans of stadium, et cetera. I think, you know, a lot of... Um, a lot of people that were used to that old business model, you know, are realizing that they have to adapt, right? The question is, for how long will they have to, you know, keep that adaptation? And how inclined will they be to try and go back to the old ways, um, as opposed to trying to, you know, actually reinvent you know, their, their income streams, um, get different revenue uh, sources. It's also about you know how they look at things such as um, investment, uh, as player uh, wages and transfer policies. Um, obviously, as you know, in, in some countries there's talks about salary caps and things like that. All of these things are right now on the table, and I think only time will tell whether you know the industry thinks that they should happen and um, whether they can take advantage of you know this opportunity, this crisis, which can accelerate them towards. You know the new normal for football, if you want to call it that. I think uh, you know some some clubs are definitely leading the way in that. Others are probably you know still a bit slower. And, and I think it's it's part of the industry, right? I think uh, you know it as well. You, you you've uh, you know worked in in, um, in the football industry for many years as well. And um, 
and you know that you know there's so many different uh, interests and, and, and ideas that you know clash with each other. And at the end of the day, I think you know it's it's also about how do you how you think long term while dealing with the short term. And I think this is something that football has historically struggled with. Um, but hopefully, you know, in the next few months and years, they will get better at it and, and make sure that they can set themselves up so that they can stay relevant in, in, the, in the future and that they can stay you know, growing as they have been for the past couple of years. Yes, and, and while, while, you, while you were talking, I was thinking of a conversation that I had recently with a friend of mine. He is a sports director, important, quite important in the in the Italian landscape. And he told me when I, I we have a we have launched with Wildlab a course in a, um, it's called the, the Modern Sport Leader. This course it's like a training program. Um, it's it's um, what's it? Uh, it's interesting from from my perspective, and uh, and it's uh, designed to prepare the new leaders to be able to manage change. You know, so we, we talk about change management, but he said to me, "But is change management or management change?" And this made made me think because it's true. Sometimes you think that we need to change. You know, the the the, the current leaders, or at least. Uh, Provide the football industries with new uh, people, new uh, what we call human capital, uh, in order to help the industry to, you know, improve, reduce the gaps. And then we also consider the Italian landscape, which is a bit different from the others. But my question is, um, apologies for the long introduction. What is the role of education in all this? Because I think you know, if we need to improve the way we do business we need to have the right people at the right place not necessarily change the current leaders but maybe you know uh, support them with new people so what is the role of education and, and especially is there room for new people in football because and the second question is considering my experience i've done one of the most important masters in Italy, one of the best in the world, definitely. It's called a Master in Strategy for the Business of Sports, and it's done in Treviso. And and um, and I was hired immediately after that from Lega Serie B, so I was one of the luckiest students. But honestly, uh, and to be fair, we are um, sometimes I think we are just selling a dream, a dream of being employed in a in an industry which is. Uh, sealed closed to new entrants um i don't want to be too you know uh too harsh in this but what's the take i mean what's the role of education and, a, and, and especially is there room for for this world to open up to new people uh new talent coming from programs like yours sure um i think the, um, the role of education right now is to be part of this generational shift Right, because I think you know, if you look at it from a perspective where you know football for so many decades was kind of like you know a very close knit uh, industry where you know only you know, people from that industry and the people that they knew directly you know would would stand to benefit from from being able to work in these types of organizations. I think we 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 are shifting away from this. Right, I think a lot of clubs and organizations you know they've come to realize that you know they are becoming bigger businesses and. With that comes a certain, you know, level of expertise that you need to have in order to make sure that you know you do things efficiently and, and, and in the best possible way. Um, so I think you know the the role of, of educational institutions such as such as ours is to make sure that you know anyone that wants to specialize in the football industry can do so because again historically this hasn't always been been possible, right? So even if someone 10, 20 years ago wanted to, you know specialize in the football industry, the options were, were you know, quite limited. And, and even to this day, I would think there's still not enough programs out there for the number of people working in the industry. Because I think at the end of the day, we, as an industry as well, I think we should aim at having, you know, a, a reality where everyone working at a certain level in the football industry on the management side has a qualification in it, right? So, I mean, it exists for football referees, it exists for football coaches, why shouldn't it exist for football administrators, right? So I think this is kind of like the role of education 
it's going to take time, obviously. I think it's a, it's a generational shift. But I think in the meantime, how we can achieve this, because uh, you asked you know, about whether there is this need or potential for new people to come in. I think uh, there's definitely that need and the interest and, and, uh, and the importance of, of having new people in. Um, so that you know the next 10, 20 years can can be you know even better than, than than the previous one. And I think in terms of how we can achieve this, I think there's there's probably three things that come to mind directly in terms of how that focus you know should should look like. I think one is leadership. I think you cannot you know really achieve a lot of things without without leadership, as as you mentioned it as well previously. Um, and, and leadership means creating an environment in which people can really realize their full potential, right? So I think the more good leadership we see in the industry, the more we'll have those types of environments where new people, old people can, you know, make an impact together and can make, um, you know, the, that mix of, of, of the past and the, and the future, let's say, um, advance in, in the right direction. And I think the second thing is, is mindset, right? I think a lot of it in the, in the football industry is also about mindset. It's about you know, wanting to break the status quo. Um, I know, you know, for some people it's, it's harder than for others. Um, but I think if, if, if we can all kind of get in that into that mindset, you know, and trying to move away from, you know, what worked in the past, you know, what worked in the future, I think we, we can definitely have uh, a bigger impact. And, um, and you know, people who are reluctant to change that status quo, I think, you know, sooner or later they, they'll also realize that, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's, you know, in their, um, to the detriment of, of their personal interest, um, I think probably on the contrary. And then the third thing I think that is definitely, you know, important that we, we play it right um, is the topic of diversity, right? I think by having people from different backgrounds, not only football, and by having, you know, more diversity and inclusion when it comes to women in football and, and, and other ethnic backgrounds and, and, and minorities. I think this will essentially also help in a football industry to, to gain new perspectives, new skills, and thereby finding new solutions. I think this is the this is role of education right now. So three great things, leadership, mindset, and diversity. Uh, I've taken notes, uh, Christian, so thank you for your insights. Well, speaking of generational shift, one of the things that come to my mind is technology. So we as Wildab are, you know, used to dealing with new technologies, new startups uh, producing, you know, applications for sports and football. So, and this is changing rapidly um, at, and in a manageable uh, kind of pace. Uh, what are you, in any case, uh, um, changing your program or uh, how are you adapting your program or thinking to adapt your program to this big change that we are seeing in not just in technology but in the consumption habits and, and models of uh, even of you know sp consuming sports and, and, and uh, from from people and, and uh, sport fans mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, I think from, from our perspective, from the FDA's perspective, we, we are, I guess, lucky to, to have had a, a head start, if you wish, um, because, you know, we were using this hybrid model since the very beginning. So we were using Zoom already since 2017. Um, so for us, when you know, COVID hit, the, the new edition literally started the day after the, the lockdown on, on the Monday. So uh, nothing's changed for, for us there. But in terms of, um, you know, how it may have caused us you know, to think ahead as well. Um, we've actually even, again, before COVID, we were planning to update our curriculum. And, and this is something that, you know, we've kind of like done every year anyway, like every professor, by being in the industry, obviously knows what is still relevant and what needs to be changed. So I think we're definitely, um, you know, quicker to, to react to, to new trends and, and changes in the industry there as well. But from our perspective, definitely, I think, you know, we, we are um, planning, you know, to, to really kind of like, rethink the curriculum yet again because so many things have changed over the past year which uh, you know we want to make sure that our, our candidates get the benefit of so that you know once they graduate you know, they're even read more ready to to step into the, the football industry um and you know this has for example been the case as well with you know bringing in certain new professors or guest lectures onto our course so for example uh, one of our partners, Benfica, as you mentioned, um, they have a really good sports data scientist um, who 
for example, does a lecture on our course. We have partnerships with companies such as Olosip, uh, who use artificial intelligence um, and you know, help they explain to our students, you know, what the potential benefits are for football clubs and, and other, you know, football-related organizations to, to benefit from, from technology and, and data. So you know, throughout the way, we're always trying to be, you know, one step ahead and, and trying to really identify, okay, like what's what's happening in the industry or what's going to happen and how can we make sure that our candidates can, can be exposed to that type of um, information and knowledge and, and, of course, networking opportunity so that they can have uh, more options later later on after they graduate. Okay. We are almost at the end of our uh, interview. Um, and so uh, just just a couple of questions. Um, final one is, uh, what's the future of the, the FBA, um, the Football Business Academy? Uh, what, do you, what do you think are the most uh, challenging hurdles and, uh, and that you need to overcome? Uh, in order to be even more successful and what's the next steps do you envision? Um, and then I urge um, the people that are following us to post questions and to make comments on uh, Facebook and YouTube, but then uh, we will uh, be able to answer them live here if if uh, if you want to, of course. Absolutely. Christian. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, in terms of the future of the um, I mean, we're only getting started, right? I mean, so far, um, we've only had one master program, right? So the one that uh, just started its seventh, seventh edition uh, a couple of weeks ago. So for us, the future is definitely to you know continue expanding on that because we know that there's a big demand, uh, interest, and need you know to professionalize even more people uh, around around the world. So um, I think for us, you know, the focus will be you know focusing on, on making sure that we we, we, have, we stay. Um, as closely connected to the football industry as possible. I think at the end of the day, that's what has made us successful thus far and, and will definitely help us you know, to continue becoming success, uh, being successful in the future um, so that we can be that bridge you know, between the talents and, and the jobs, let's say. And in terms of hurdles, uh, I think for us, um, as with any startup probably, I think the, the challenge will be to make sure that you know we don't take too much on our plate, that we don't go too fast either. Obviously there's there's a balance to, to be found there in terms of how fast you know you can accelerate new products or, or new programs or whatever the case. But I think you know it's it's important to, to keep a certain focus and make sure that you say yes to the right opportunities and say no to the wrong opportunities. And then you know let time kind of define how uh, those other opportunities might or might not you know come again in, in the future. Um, because when, when you create you know such a such a company or such a platform which has you know such a big impact and such a wide network um, you know the opportunities they come in every day right there's always people uh, reaching out to us uh, with different ideas or requests or whatever and I think for for us as, as founders as, as, um, as uh, you know, people running business uh, it's important to to make sure that we, we can, can keep our focus and, and make sure that at the same time, you know, we try to create value for our candidates and partners, and that um, you know we continue this role uh, as educators, you know, to to try and get the industry forward, to educate the industry itself as well. I think this is also something overlooked sometimes in terms, in terms of like, you know, if, if the industry didn't have this habit of you know working with new talent and, and doing internships and projects, etc., well, so also our role to educate them not only our students, in terms of how they can actually do that and benefit from that. So I think these are probably the, the next few steps uh, on, on, on our agenda. And um, we're very excited. We have a great team. We have uh, you know, great um, great investors behind us that you know fully believe in, in, in our potential and in our team and, and, and the product, essentially, right, that, that we created. And, um, and with the backing of the industry that we've been able to build up over the past years, I think we're, we're definitely on, on the right path. Yeah. Well, I'm empathetic with you because uh, this is the challenges that we're facing with Wilabe on a daily basis, just to bring you know innovation into sports and to you know create a link between uh, startups and uh, and the football or the sports industry. Uh, and this is what you're doing with people. Uh, we also do that with people because we have some training programs. So I totally understand the challenges. I think it's a fascinating very interesting very nice um job and and challenge and it's very tricky so it's it's like uh 
I think we are living a good time of, of uh, disruption, and and this is the time where we can, um, in a sense, um, create history, if you will. Um, one final question. It's the typical uh, final um, question they ask my my guests. Um, uh, what what's what's your advice? If you could give an advice to a startup, you are a startup, or you are an entrepreneur. You know this world. So, what advice you will give? You would give to a to a startup or to a startup operating in the football or sports industry. Um, well, I guess for for any startup, anyway, the the two main advice would probably be to you know really work on having a great team um, and and really focus on on building the product. Right. I think at the end of the day, if, if you have that great team, you know, complementary skills, and you have that good vibe that good energy going doesn't mean that you have to you know agree with each other all the time but i think you know with when you have opposing uh views i think it helps to you know elevate everyone at the end of the day so making sure that you, you surround yourself you know with people that um you can trust of course and, and that have you know complementary skills to yours if, you, if you're the founder for example it's definitely uh, always important for any startup and then also you know that focus on, on building the product right? i think um you know the marketing and everything is obviously part of it but you, you have to start with the product first and that's when you can really then uh, if you want to exploit you know, that product you know, same was with with the premier league when when they were uh, thinking about you know what today is probably the best football product in the world well i can tell you at the, at the late 80s early 90s premier league was was in shambles it was you know Filled with hooliganism and whatnot, and um, and the people that set up the Premier League, you know, they really focused on getting the product right, and then you know think about how they they can commercialize it afterwards. Um, and so those those are definitely two you know recommendations for any startup anyway. And then I think specifically for the sports or, or football industry, the the third recommendation would definitely be to work on your networking. Um, as I said, like you know, so much so much happens. In this industry, because of relationships and, 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 and the people that you know, so if, if you can, you know, spend some time every day or week, you know, to try to do something that will enhance your 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 network, uh, I think this can can go a long way, right? And I think it's also part of, you know, while you expand your network, essentially, you know, you, you end up meeting new people, different ideas come in, different conversations ensue. And then, you know, one thing can always lead to the other and, and it can go in, in the benefit of, of, of your startup, right? Um, so I think, you know, networking is definitely one of one of the biggest recommendations there. Definitely one of the, you know, big factors as to why I think um, the FBA as well has been able to um, to become you know, so successful. And then maybe as a final bonus um, recommendation, knowing that, you know, your audience is mainly Italian, and uh, you know, not specifying it only for Italy, but you know, having, as you said in the beginning, traveled to so many countries around the world, I think um, people underestimate the importance of, of speaking languages. So I think definitely, you know, learning good English uh, can also go a long way for many startups if they to, uh, you know, get a create an impact in, in the sports or football industry because it's so global. Right. So I think um, I can leave it at that for for a recommendation. <laughs> Well, fantastic, Christian. I, I took notes. I think you've given uh, such incredible, valuable insights uh, to our followers. And um, <clears throat> totally agree with you. Team is uh, paramount, fundamental. Also, of course, a product and uh, networking. We're never too good at doing that, right? And and it's so important. Uh, um, and of course, learning languages and speaking languages can can help definitely. Thank you very much. Uh, I had a uh, fantastic 35 minutes of, um, of, of time with you. I hope uh, our friends enjoyed, uh, enjoyed it too. So I, I, good luck for your, for your future uh, career enterprise. I think you have a bright future with the FBA and, uh, and uh, hopefully we can touch base soon. And um, good luck, my friend. And thank you very much for, your, for coming here and accepting my invitation. Likewise, Federico, for, for me as well, it was a pleasure. Thank you also to everyone tuning in. Um, any founders out there, good luck with, with your projects as well. Don't hesitate to reach out if you, if you think we can help in any way. And Federico, to you personally as well, hope uh, the next few talks will be at least as interesting 
and uh, wishing you all the best with YLAP and looking forward to uh, to our next chat, which hopefully will be physical again. I hope so, and uh, and uh, and shortly as well. So uh, thank you very much again. Um, and insomma, a noi ci vediamo la prossima settimana per una nuova puntata di YLAP Innovation Talks. Grazie a tutti, buona serata e a presto. Ciao Cristian. Ciao Federico, grazie.